uh, Emily Freeman is here. She's ready to come in and we're gonna preview her uh, lightning talk. Uh, Emily, um, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate you uh, coming on. Really, this is about a talk around DevOps next gen. And I think, Lisa, this is one of those things we've been, we've been discussing with all the companies. It's a new <laughs> kind of thinking. It's a revolution. It's a systems mindset. You're starting to see the connections. There she is, Emily. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So your teaser video was amazing. Um, you know, that little secret radical idea, something completely different. Um, you got a talk coming up. What's the premise behind this revolution? You know, these, you know, tying together architecture, development, automation, deployment, operating all together. Yes. Well, we have traditionally um, always used the SDLC, which is the software delivery lifecycle. Um, and it is a straight linear process that has actually been around since the 60s, which is wild to me um, <laughs> and really originated in manufacturing. Um, and as much as I love, you know, the to Toyota production system and how much it has shown up in DevOps uh, as a sort of inspiration on how to run things better, we are not making cars, <laughs> we are making software. And I think we have to use different approaches and create a sort of model that better reflects our, our modern software development process. Well, it's a bold idea. I'm looking forward to the talk. And, and as motivation, I went into my basement and dusted off all my books from college <laughs> in the eighties and the CS, med, it was waterfall. It was software yeah. development life cycle. They trained us to think this way and it came from the mainframe people. Yes. It was like, it's old school, like really, really old and it really hasn't been updated. Where's the motivation? I mean, obviously cloud is, is kind of converging everything together. We see that, but you kind of hit on this persona thing. Where did that come yes. from this persona? Cause you know, people want to put people in buckets. I'm a yes. release engineer. I mean, where, where's that motivation coming from? Yes, you're absolutely right that it came from the mainframes. I think, you know, waterfall is necessary when you're using a punch card or mag tape to load things onto um, a mainframe, but we don't exist in that world anymore, thank goodness. And um, yes, yeah, so we we use personas all the time in tech, you know, even to register, well, not actually to register for this event, but a lot of events, a lot of events, you have to click that drop down, right? Are you a developer? Are you a manager? Whatever. And the thing is, personas are immutable in my opinion. I was a developer, I will always identify as a developer despite playing a lot of different roles and doing a lot of different jobs. Uh, and, and this can vary throughout the day, right? You might have someone who has a title of software architect who ends up you know, helping someone pair program or develop or test or deploy. Um, and so we wear a lot of hats yeah. day to day. And I think our, our discussions around roles would be a better, um, certainly a better approach than personas. You know, Lisa and I have been discussing with many of these companies around the roles and we're hearing from them directly and they're finding out that people have, they're mixing and matching on teams. So you're, you're an SRE on one team and you're doing something on another team where the workflows and the workloads define the team formation. So this is a cultural discussion. Is it? it absolutely is, yes. I think it is a cultural discussion and it really comes to the heart of DevOps, right? It's people, process, and then tools. Um, DevOps has always been about culture and making sure that developers have all the tools they need to be productive and honestly happy. <laughs> what, what good is all of this if um, developing software isn't a joyful experience? Well, I got to ask you, well, I got you here, obviously with serverless and functions, you're starting to see this kind of this next gen. And we're going to hear from Jerry Chen, who's a Greylock VC, who's going to talk about castles um, in the clouds where he's discussing the moats that could be created with a competitive advantage in cloud scale. And I think he points to the snowflakes of the world. You're starting to see this new thing happening. This is DevOps 2.0, this is the revolution. Is this kind of where you see the same vision of your talk? Yes. So DevOps, you know, created 2008, 2009, totally different ecosystem and world we were living in. You know, we didn't have things like serverless and containers. Uh, we didn't have this sort of default distributed nature, certainly not the cloud. Uh, and so I'm very excited for Jerry's talk. I'm curious to hear more about these moats. I think it's fascinating. Um, but yeah, you're seeing different companies you use different uh, tools and processes to accelerate their delivery. Um, and that is the competitive advantage. How can we figure out how to utilize these tools in the most efficient way possible. Well, Emily, thank you for coming on and giving a little preview. Let's now go to your lightning keynote talk, fresh content premiere of this revolution in DevOps, Emily Freeman's talk. We'll go there now. 